Here's our situation here in the Eastern Theater right now. I think I want to pull back Johnston's core in the face of the Department of Pennsylvania deep into the Maryland Panhandle. I was chasing after the Army of the Potomac into the Cumberland area, but there's the Department of the West with 16,000 men. That's a little bit larger than Johnston's Corps. We could bring up Lee to reinforce, but that leaves our whole our whole Eastern Theater exposed, especially Virginia and the main road into Richmond. So I'd rather put exert some pressure eastward rather than westward in the Maryland region. So I think we will order Johnson to fall back. Fall back to Hagerstown. We will headquarter Beauregard at Hagerstown and we'll actually move Lee out. We'll wait for Johnson to move out and then we'll actually move Lee out and strike towards Baltimore. Oh, too late, as Johnson's Corps is now attacked by Caldwalder. Now, reinforcements are on their way, as Lee is dispatched, but it won't be on the field of battle until 14 hours, so we could order Johnston to try to hold his position for the day. Which we'll, So we'll try to we'll actually have Johnston prepare a defensive position. The Battle of Cumberland... October 20th, 1861, the initial skirmishing and maneuvers of opposing armies are deployed for battle. Now, the Confederacy fields 34,000 men, but Johnson only has about 10 to 11,000 men on the field at the beginning of this battle. The version of this game is currently patched to, nine, to the .92 version, if anyone is curious, as this campaign has started in the .901 and has gone through a couple patches already. Ah, we're going to be playing around the Sharpsburg area. Oh, so we can have some really decent defensive terrain. We can defend behind the creek. We'll probably have to sacrifice. Well, actually, we could have a forward position here. Our engineering points are 12, so we can actually... So we'll have about 10,000, at least 10,000 men here to defend. So unfortunately, there's feels like there's too much to defend. Jackson. We could sacrifice maybe our right flank a little bit. So Beauregard is on the field of battle. Maybe we can have Jeb Stewart guard the lower bridge. Early grow, uh, guard the middle bridge. Pendleton's guns. Wingo will remain along the road here. Let's dismount Stuart. We'll put Clark's guns right here. So we'll have to, if I had more, if I had more troops, I would probably position, I would probably position on the, the high ground along Prize Ford, but we'll stay behind the creek. Put Frost's men in front of Fry's Ford, though, or Prize Ford. Let's put Wingo here. Walton will guard the upper bridge area. So I have spread out my forces. Oh, there you go. Oh, build it. Come on. We're going to try to build a series of breastworks. I 
All right, we've built, um, we've tried to fortify our position. Again, the goal is this is to, is to buy time for Lee's core to arrive. Now it's all dependent on how the union advances on us. So Pendleton's guns have line of fire along the Boonesboro road and the road out of Sharpsburg to the lower bridge. My main concern would probably be a large movement towards the upper bridge. But we should be able to see if there's any advancing Federals down the upper bridge road by Prize Mill in time to send Walton over there. Actually, and we can send, we can throw Wingo in there too. Oh, there they are. They are, they're doing exactly what I didn't want them to do. What we're going to do is we're going to mount, we're going to abandon lower bridge. We're going to send Wingo over here. Walton is actually going to try to get to the upper bridge as quickly as he can. See if Clark can position his guns to fire on double day. All right, so double day coming down the uh, bridge. So they're going to actually flank Walton as Walton can't get the orders in time. Clark is there, but is there a line? Okay, they're, they're opening fire now on double day's battery. Now they're sending artillery though without infantry support. Let's order Walton on the double quick. So we're starting the battle at five o'clock in the evening, so there's not a lot of daylight. Double Day's artillery, actually it says Patterson's artillery, but it's commanded by Double Day. Don't see any other Federals. So Walton's there in time. Without much infantry support, the artillery is that artillery is sitting prey. And there's some Walton has found some cover too in the trees. So behind cover, they're suffering from unit is cut off. So the division commander. So I'll order Gladden to rally, and oh, they're gonna take they're gonna cross the bridge to get over there. All right, Walton taking artillery fire. Ooh, they're already nervous. Thirty-six percent morale. Let's get Wingo's brigade in support. Oh man, Walton breaks already. Where's Stuart? We'll send Stuart and uh, Wingo's brigade in to reinforce. I'd see some federal infantry under Amber Combi. Actually, why don't we send, we're gonna send Pendleton over here. We've abandoned Lower Bridge.
So artillery duel between Clark's battalion and Doubleday. Doubleday's crossing the the upper bridge. Wingo's going to try to stop them. It looks like Walton's brigade is rallying behind the Corps commander and Beauregard. Wingo coming under some fire now. Looks like some of the Federals are are getting tired though. I mean, you should probably dismount, Stuart. We'll throw out some skirmishers. Okay, Wingo drives off uh, Double Day's artillery. Uh oh, I want to slow down, Wingo. A little over aggressive there with Wingo's brigade. So Wingo's going to. Go straight at 2nd Brigade. Who's, who's that commanded by? Can't get the name very good there. A little. Alright, so we have uh, Lost Resilience. We're losing that pretty quickly now. Three and a half more hearts of lost resilience for Wingo's brigade. Trying to get the skirmishers to get on the flank there. Stuart trying to also support in the attack, or the defense, I should say, of Upper Bridge. see any other Union troops uh, threatening any of the other bridges. So maybe we need to bring over one more brigade, maybe early. I want to keep uh, Frost where he's at. Alright, we'll order early to march towards Wingo. Nightfall, the sun is starting to set in the autumn, in the late autumn day here. Second Brigade, Third Division of the Union Army taking on heavy casualties. Wingo also sustaining quite a bit of casualties. 
We finally broke second brigade. They have a lot of artillery though. That's where I think Wingo is taking a lot of their casualties it's from that artillery fire right across the upper bridge there. Third Brigade of the Union Army trying to cross the upper bridge. Is that Williams, I think? Hard to say, hard to tell what the name is. But they are getting, running into a wall of lead, but it's going to be dicey how long, much longer Wingo can uh, hold out. Early, all right, we hit, hit the end of the day. Darkness has fallen. Fighting ceases for the today. Prepare for the next day's fighting. Troops resupplied. Pull your forces for battle. When finished, press play. Quartermaster's morning report. Report status of your army as compiled by the quartermaster during the night. Reports suggest morale in the army is intact. Total, The total men reported wounded is up to 269. The army supply situation is outstanding. Did reinforcements arrive? That's the key. Lee is still not here. That is not good news. Ooh, it looks like Union provisions are low according to this. Alright, here's the report I was looking for. Consolidated, consolidated condition report. Lee's core is idle and arriving in one hour. So we have one hour before he arrives from his overnight march. A couple other things I've noticed with the headquarter reports. If you click on army of, you can move up the order of battle. So all the way up to overview of the total confederacy. So you can see the fighting spirit 73, union is 100. And that mainly has to do with uh, because we are on Union territory, uh, the Union is now defending their homeland. They get a bonus to the Fighting Spirit. We are we get a negative modifier to our Fighting Spirit for invading um, enemy territory. Training though, training is forty versus twenty nine for the Union readiness. One hundred and hundred intelligence gathering. It looks like Union has slight advantage there. So I like the remarks, best battalion, best division. If we go back to Confederacy, Army of Northern Virginia, best army. That's the only army on the field. Best corps, Lee's corps. Fighting spirits at 73. Johnston's corps is a little bit better trained. Best division in Lee's army is Yule's. And you also have some information. If you break down into the brigades, you can get a little bit more detailed information, experience. Two stars for jo uh, Jones Brigade, one star for McIntosh's. Best Brigade is DR Jones's Brigade. There's also ranking. Why is Hampton only ranked five? I know he usually has the smallest amount of men, but he fights. He fights well. All right, so we have one hour. The main information I wanted to gather out of that report is when Lee is going to arrive. I think we're going to pull out Ling uh, Wingo. Jackson's actually going on the right here. They want to keep. Let's see here. We have Walton, Frost. So we'll keep Frost where he was. Walton has recovered, and we can maybe put him back here or over here. Well, that leaves us early in Wingo and Stewart. So 
we're gonna put I put early right here and we're gonna build some breastworks so early's gonna be in a well defended position here Lingo will be will be held in reserve he did a lot of fighting the first day Stuart only lost one man he's gonna actually gonna guard this forest this little tree area here we'll put Pendleton right up here our biggest weakness though is if there's another division that comes out of Sharpsburg down the middle bridge which we can I guess we can, can hold Wingo back here but that's where Lee will go if need be and actually once Lee gets here and if we can hold the Federals here Lee could probably cross on this middle on the middle bridge or the bridge in between middle bridge at Pyres Ford or Prize Ford I have it ready all right here comes the second day which will be the full day battle Alright, good. They got. Okay. I see the green fence. They're in cover. Oh, the Rockbridge artillery also gains cover, too. Oh, Early's detachment, though, already. Broken. We get a glimpse of the entire, I shouldn't say the entire Union Army, but a big chunk of the Union Army. Where is Lee? Where is Lee? Hold until relieved. Third Brigade is sent reeling back. How are our gunners doing against their guns, though? Oh man, why is early wavering already? He's behind. Oh, give me a break early. You cannot be doing this. I guess that artillery fire from across the bridge is just too devastating. He's getting nervous already. If we can, I don't think I want to do that. They're bro oh, they're broken. They're broken already. Stewart's gonna have to hold the line with his unmounted cavalry. Or we All right, Lee, Lee arrives though. So why don't we march Wingo up here? I want to use reverse slope though for Wingo. The Cooper is right there to get ready to cross. The artillery fire is just too devastating, I guess. Early is just going to be disgraced. Looks like uh, Rockbridge artillery is might be wavering also.
Well, at least uh, one of the Union batteries uh, is starting to waver as well. Let's start assigning orders to Lee. All right, so pillow, pillow will come prize mill. All right, you will we'll march to Middle Bridge, and make a crossing there. Is it just the two divisions then? So we did send one of the Union artillery batteries broken and fleeing the battle. Wingo is just moved up to guard against a possible bridge crossing there. It looks like uh, Rock Bridge might be. Let's let's have him fall back. Hopefully he can fall back without breaking. Not seeing any serious attempt by the Union to cross anywhere. All right, there's Clayton's division. Now it looks like we have three Union brigades now getting in position to cross. Jackson's demoralized. Because uh, Pendleton trying to fall back and he broke. So that leaves Stewart to guard the upper bridge, but we have reinforcements on the way. Grant Double Day and Grant commanding artillery brigades. Another Union artillery brigade has broken. So that's three of theirs, though. You see Lee's Corps now arriving on the field. And without the Union making any attempt to cross. We should be free to try to cross down uh, down creek here near Sharpsburg and try to hit the flank here. Keeping an eye on Union movements. Pillow will Pillow's division will get into position, and then we'll send the other two divisions. Clayton and Yule to do the flank attack. So our troops can kind of rest here, considering no major attack made by the Union right now. Clark's gun keeping first battery at bay. Looks like we have a traffic jam though.
So Macintosh uh, arriving near Middlebridge. Order Macintosh to throw skirmishers across Antietam Creek. We're showing a minor defeat right now. Estimated casualties are 897 on our side and 1,000 to them. Much greater percentage of theirs. All right, it's about 10 a.m. Unfortunately, we only have two brigades from Yule's division near. They're, all, they're close behind. We might even send Frost across. We'll take uh, Pyre's, or I keep calling it Pyre's Ford, Prize Ford. So it looks like there's some movement now by the Union as they might be realizing what's going on. All right, let's start getting, um, I should probably put Pillow's men in position here. Throw out skirmishers into battle line formation. Put guns up here. So two brigades being sent up prize mill. And are they able to ford the creek? Definitely after the long marching though, we'll have to watch and keep an eye on the condition of, so well, uh, fatigue is well rested for Jones. So the long, the long marching hasn't affected them too much. Macintosh did not cross. We're going to send Howald's Cavalry Brigade to Sharpstown. Or Sharpsburg. Wow, really butchering the names. Wingo's going to send some skirmishers out of, behind the breastworks. As fighting has started to intensify once again after the couple hour hiatus, Preston's division. Well, that's the cat. That's the cavalry division. Actually, is there a crossing? No, there's not. 